Hey, what's up, Hip Hop Link Plea? It's your girl, Ari Rose, and I'm here today with one of the hottest on-demand hit makers, producer, business boy. How you doing today? I'm doing great, I'm blessed. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa, bad bitch. Who she got it? Ass fat. King of diamonds. Throw it back like we at Follies. Keep on bouncing like she at Onyx. Bad bitch. Who she got it? Okay, so you are on fire. Like you've been on fire, but all of a sudden everywhere I look, I see business boy, business boy, business boy, which is so freaking amazing. Mm -hmm. um, you've been in LA for how long? I've been here for like four and a half years. And you're from Milwaukee? From Wisconsin? Milwaukee, Wisconsin, yeah. And then, so how did you make that move here? Like, let's go back to the basics, cause okay. I just want to know your story. Like, how did you even start producing? Uh, basically, my grandmother bought me this game and uh, I was like in middle school, seventh grade, she bought me this game, MTV Music Generator for the PlayStation. Okay. And then from then I was just making beats. Uh, I could never get the MP3 or the shit off the, <laughs> off the game, so it was like practice. So uh, later, probably like senior year in high school, I uh -huh. got the program I use to this day, FL Studio. Wow. And that's when I really took it serious and I was just producing locally. So I hit a ceiling in the city. I'm like, yo, I need more. And afterwards, probably like 2011, okay. I moved to Atlanta. Nice. And just for the opportunities there, I moved down there. The first year was dope, but I was more in the crib. The second, mm -hmm. the second year, that's when I started getting out because when you're just making beats, they just sitting on your computer, yeah. you gotta get them out and emailing. It don't cut through uh, the majority of the time. It's like face to face right. transactions that you have to do and like really meet people and build with them. Mm -hmm. So the second year I was getting out, met a lot of dope people down there, and so I, I feel like I hit a ceiling there too because I make so many different beats. I make R and B, I make pop, uh, alternative, rap, trap, all type of stuff. So. I was like, yo, I want to move to LA and see where it would take me. And I moved here April 2014. And like the day I moved here, it was dope because uh, I set up a meeting the next day and uh, APG, my homie Jeffrey Vaughn from APG, bought this beat from Kevin for Kevin Gates. Mm -hmm. for, like it was like the most money I ever seen for one beat. So I'm like, oh yeah, I'm most definitely finna be living here. And, so I've been here ever since, just making moves. I love it here because yeah. I can showcase uh, a wide range of my production. Yeah. You know, I can get stuff with black, and I can get stuff with plies, and yeah. just all type of stuff. So, yeah. And so, like, you have one of the hottest hits out right now with black, which is "Let Her Go." I mean, you also have "Loaded Gun" and yeah. other projects. Like, I see that there's people doing like these dance contests and these mm -hmm. dance moves to like that record. Like, how does that feel seeing like your stuff just going viral on the Man, internet? It's it's a real blessing. So I want to thank God for for everything. Just because that record almost didn't happen. Oh, um, nice. yeah, it's crazy. I booked a flight to Toronto. I was finna go pull up on my homies Always Never. Uh, they was working on a project and something was telling me like, yo, don't go, don't go. It was weird. So I'm like, yo, I'm tripping out in the crib. I'm like, yo, what is going on? And then that same week, it was like a, a shooting up there. So I was like, oh, I'm most definitely not going. And then the night before, I ain't even packed. I woke up, missed the flight on, uh, on purpose. Oh, wow. So, that day I'm like, yo, I'm gonna just make beats today and I'm gonna just make it do what it do. And then Let Her Go was the first beat I made that wow. day. So if I, I feel like if I would've went to Toronto, yeah, it would've never happened. How big are you on like following your gut? Cause that obviously taps into you like being spiritual mm -hmm. or like just following your gut. Like how does that influence your, what you're producing and just kind of like your, uh, your weight. I'm your very weight. spiritual. I keep God first. So yeah. uh, I've always been spiritual, but when I got on my journey, that's when I was really like meditating and yeah. reading more and praying more and yeah. everything. 
So yeah, I just trust my gut, and if it feels right, I just go for it. Yeah. So, yeah. so what does a day in the life of Business Boy look like? Basically, wake up, work out. Um, work out every day. Not every day. I'll be taking. I'll be taking weekends off. I'll be taking them weekends off. I'll be missing a couple of days. But um, yeah, I work out, and then I read. Uh, mm-hmm. So I post two books. Uh, 365 Days of Richer Living is one of them. That's people gravitate to that one a lot. Yeah. It's, it's real spiritual. I have a copy of that. Yep, yep. So I post that, and then. Basically, I just have sessions where I'd be at the crib making beats, yeah. or if I got to pull up to the studio, yeah. I pull up over there and just working. I'm, I'm trying to stay busy, but yeah. also productive, because you can be yeah. busy and, and be, not be doing yeah, nothing so still. I'm just trying to stay productive and, you know. What was that moment in your career where, like, you're in L.A. now, and, you know, L.A. is a whole other beast. Yeah. yeah. It is tough in L.A. Like, when was that moment when you were in L.A. when you just realized, like, oh, my God, I'm really doing this? Like, man, it had to, I'm, like, that next, like, I'm it. <laughs> man, it had to, it had to been, like, two and a half years ago okay. when I started working with Party Next Door. And because I had placements before, but this was, like, crazy to me. Yeah. Uh, we dropped this track, Don't Do It For You No More. That went crazy. And yeah. we dropped Cuffed Up with Party Next Door and Quavo. Me and Murder Beast did, did that track. And then I had the third single on P3. And I was like, yo, it's, it's real now. Like all these people, they're like, who's Business Boy? And then Yaya Lee coming up, Black coming up. Yeah. Uh, so I say working with Party Next Door, dropping on three records and then having uh, three more on the album, four total, yeah. it was like, a real blessing because even people he worked with like before me ain't have that many records on there you know yeah. so it was like a, a blessing you right. know i was real grateful for that situation and yeah it just went crazy from then uh months down the line probably like three months after p3 drop uh free black came out and that's when it was like it was like yo who's this business boy guy who's this business boy guy and then just more artists and labels reaching out, and then we build in from scratch. How does that feel? It feel it feel great. It's a real feel like your hard work paid off. Yeah, it, it's crazy because you work all these years and put in all this time just yeah. to start your career. You yeah. know, that's how I feel. Like I, I feel like working with Party that was the beginning. I had right. like years before. It was like the groundwork. Yeah. Try, trying Planting to get to the them seeds. Ten thousand hours. Yeah. So, yeah. And you're a Grammy nominated producer now as well. Yeah. You yeah. gotta add that to the list. Yeah, that's a super blessing. And we made we made free black, not even like expecting like you know what I'm saying anything. We're just yeah. making great music and yeah, it just it's a real blessing. I was in the studio with uh, Party Next Door. We had a session from like nine PM to like eleven the next day and that Jesus. Yeah, we made some crazy stuff that night and that's the night that I found out that I was Grammy nominated. Wow. I text my grandma, uh, I like six in the morning. I was like, <laughs> wake up, Grammy. I'm Grammy nominated. Cause she always wow. believed in me, but like now she like, yo, you really doing this? Yeah. You know how I've been yeah. with parents and they, they believe in it, but when, once they see it start happening, it's, like, wow. it's crazy. It's yeah. yeah. So now you have the dopest playlist and I'm gonna tell you guys, cause I'm gonna tag this, his Spotify <laughs> playlist that he sent to me the other day and I was on a road trip, a four and a half hour road trip and I kid you not, I listened to it the entire way. So like your playlist and your music and everything you produce, it's such a vibe. Yeah, like where do you get the inspiration for that? Like, is it just cause it works for you? Is that just like the person that you are? Like how do you create? It's, like, it's, it's my upbringing. Yeah. Uh, my, grand, my grandparents, you know, they older, so they was listening to the 70s, they was listening to yeah. the 80s, and then my, my pops was around. He would bring in the 90s, the, mm-hmm. the uh, Teddy Rileys and yeah. all that stuff. So it was just a mixture. And then growing up listening to like Bone Thugs and Harmony, mm-hmm. Jay-Z, yeah. uh, Three Six Mafia. So it's all these influences. I'm from yeah. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That's in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> So we getting stuff from the west side, from the west coast, we getting stuff from the east coast, south, yeah. everywhere, Chicago right there. So I was just influenced by that. My grandparents just always 
had the music blasting. She, my grandma yeah. would be cooking and it, the music would be <laughs> blasting. So I just, growing up on that stuff, it made me want to make like timeless, yeah, like timeless classics. music. Yeah, just classic, yeah. classic music. And not, not trying to make something that's just here for now and gone, yeah. but like just timeless classic stuff. So. And that's what I was realizing because I was like doing this drive and I'm listening to all your beats and I'm just like, it, it's like you could be happy, you could be in love, you could yeah. be sad, but it's still something that I want to like ride to, I want to vibe to. Yeah. Like if I'm preparing for like an interview like this, like it's something to kind of ease my mind. Like everything's just kind of like a dope vibe. Mm -hmm. So congrats on that because you oh, just super it. keep the consistency appreciate on it. it. Um, and so now tell us about, you just created a music group. Mm -hmm. You started your own music group, yeah. so tell us about that. Business Boy Music Group, uh, we just started that. And I signed my first artist, Symphony Soto. Y'all go check her out. She's very dope from Florida. And uh, basically, my homegirl Dimples, she uh, she hit me up like, yo, I got an artist I want you to work with. She she moving here from Florida. And I, uh, I checked out her page. I'm like, oh, it's lit. It's already it's already lit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She's, she's dope. She had like a music video out before. Mm -hmm. And I listened to it. And I was like, yo, let's, let's really make it happen. Yeah. And from then, we just started setting up sessions and we just in and out, in and out, and just creating. So the first couple of songs was like, you know, we testing it out. And then yeah. Dimples, Dimples heard it. She was like, yo, Symphony sounds amazing on like acoustic stuff. Like, uh -huh. y'all should go that direction. So shout out to Dimples. She inspired <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> she inspired and she led the way for the sound of the first EP, uh, yeah. I Am by Symphony. So yeah, we, uh, I brought my homies in, writers, and then nice. producers, theory, and guitarists, uh, Zarius. Wow. And, yeah, I, man, I, I'm that type of producer. I don't want to do everything by myself. Yeah. I'm trying to make the, the best product. And so I'm going to bring in whoever I got to bring in to make yeah. sure the sound is like A1. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's been a real blessing. Um, just having my own artist. She's easy to work with. She's a go-getter. and. She's very talented, so yeah. yeah. Super dope. I look forward to meeting her. Yeah. All right, so you were talking about how you were brought up like listening to old school music. What do you think about all the new school music that's out right now? The trends, the mumble rap, all that stuff. Like, how do you, what do you think about that? Uh, I feel like, I feel like it's a lot of music coming out. And as far as rap, it's a lot of like sub genres. Mm -hmm. But I think it's dope. Uh, I feel like we have control of what we listen to now. Yeah. So even, I know some of the OGs, they like, yo, we don't rock with that. And it's always been like yeah. that, like every generation. But like, you don't really got to listen to it at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We got, we still got radio and all this stuff. But like, it's really, it's really up to you as yeah. a fan. Like, if you mess with, say like LMA, you can just listen to LMA and all like, day, you day know day. what I'm saying? Yeah. And like, artists that relate to her, so. Uh, as far as mumble rap, I, I listen to mumble rap. I like that. It, the beats be crazy. The beats crazy. be crazy. But like the what mumble, what the mumble rap, it's the melodies that get you too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. Well, yeah, that's what it is. It's really it's because you can't really you hear. It, you know what, what I'm saying? saying. So, but I, I mean, it is what it is. You know, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a fan of a lot of music and mumble rap. I will listen to some mumble rap. And I mean, like, it's just like evolved in such a way like the old school to the new school and like even just in certain artists mm -hmm. in the industry like for example Kanye yeah you know he has transformed from like A to Z and there's I mean <laughs> that's a whole other controversial topic because I think you can look at that from a lot of different points but like what's your take on that like what's your take on Kanye and how he's like evolved in Kanye that right now? Kanye is one of my favorite artists favorite producers um, Super, super dope. I just feel like he's in this space. Um, like, I think he means good, but it's kind of hard for him to articulate what he's saying. Like, slavery was a choice and <laughs> just all this stuff. So, like, he would say something crazy and then he had to explain it afterwards. Yeah, because so. I think he just comes off, like, so direct, but then he's like, wait, but I didn't really mean it like that. <laughs> Hold on. Like, he said he has to explain himself. So, you talk about you like mumble rap, uh -huh. you like listening to the beats ago. <laughs> what are, what's currently on your playlist? What do you listen to? I'm listening to, outside of the music I'm producing, I like LMA, I like The Trip. Um, it's a good song. Great song. 
Who am I listening to? Gunna. Gunna, mm-hmm. like Lil Baby, Young Thug. I like, I love the Young Thug and Elton John record. That's, it's, yeah. it's so crazy. Um, I'll be listening to like alternative music too. Um, it's this group called like Midnight. They do like 80s stuff. Oh, okay. So they dropped that album. I think it's called Kids. And okay. it's just nothing but like 80s sound and stuff. That's pretty dope. Um, I'm listening to J.I.D. He's like a monster, an alien. He he yeah. up and coming right now. He got an album dropping soon. So I'm listening to a lot of stuff. Alternative, rap, what trap. About, what about the Carter um, Five? I listen to the Carter Five. What I do you like think it. About it. I like it. Uh, Wayne is still a beast, obviously. I just feel like it was too long. You know. Too long. You can never have too much Wayne. <laughs> oh, man, when you sitting there, it's like 24 songs, and you like, man. <sighs> Hey, I listen to 24 be, songs on Spotify, I'm sure. Yeah, but I guess it's me being like an yeah. on-the-go person and yeah. producing, and I don't be having like time to like listen take Listen to 24 in. Yeah. songs? If it was like 12, 14, I'd be like, that's perfect. But 24? Yeah, but Wayne, Wayne still got it. Uh, shout out to Wayne. Just, I'm glad he got through what he went through, yes. and he's able to own everything he's doing mm-hmm. now and the drop music. And I think yeah. the, I think the project is dope. You know, I think the project is dope. Yeah, definitely got a lot of people talking again, and yeah. and they're doing the challenge too for the uproar. Mm-hmm. You know, you see it everywhere. He <laughs> did it. What, I think he did it on Instagram with his kids or something recently. Yeah. Super dope. So as a producer, do you feel like producers don't get enough credit, enough shine? Um, I feel like in today's world, it's getting like way better. Like. Like Spotify, they giving producer spotlights. Mm-hmm. They got secret genius, so they putting all these producers and writers, the people behind the scenes, they putting them to the forefront yeah. now. And I know Spotify did like some, you know, what I'm saying some stuff on me, and they just getting these creators in, in the forefront. And yeah, I think it used to be trash, and they used to keep us hidden, mm-hmm. but right now it's, it's different, and they really like. The producers are the superstars too now. Yeah. You know, you got the London on the track, you got Metro Booming, yeah. Mike Will, and so people, it's, it's different now. So shout out to all the producers grinding and getting their names out here. Who are some of your favorite producers right now? Uh, or people right now? Or, or just in general, producers that have either influence Jim, that you follow, or that you. Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis, Teddy Riley, Timberland, Pharrell, London on the track, Metro. Um, even people in my own group, uh, 94, Theory, uh, Fortune, Kuntaj, it's a lot. Like, I'm, I'm a fan, I'm a, I'm a fan, like, I'm not scared to be, like, a fan and tell you that I am a fan, so I'm just, I'm putting that energy out, yeah. you know, because that's how we're supposed to be. We're supposed You're to, supposed to uplift each yeah, other. Yeah, uplift each other, show love. So, yeah. And I think it's dope because like a lot of people are afraid to even just say like I'm a fan or something. Mm-hmm. And when you do that, like people actually gravitate towards you yeah. because they know that you appreciate the hard work mm-hmm. and like you're respecting their career and like what yeah. they have going most on. Definitely, so, most definitely, most definitely got to show love out here. Don't yeah. be scared to show love, you know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, and so five years from now, where do you think or what do you plan? I don't want to say think because you're five years just being a mogul and yeah. I, I want to help as many people as I can while I'm yeah. here on earth. Uh, that's why I feel like God put us here. We're just here yeah. helping each other, sharing ideas, barters. Mm-hmm. And so in five years, I, I see myself just being like a household name, a yeah. mogul, entrepreneur, just helping people, like yeah. signing people, giving them the, the best deals possible, making sure everybody eats. Yeah, a passion of mine is, is helping people. So five yeah. years, just want to do like more charity work, uh, putting people on. I just want to change people's lives. Like yeah. Make people money and change their lives so they can provide for their family. Yeah, that's you know? for sure. Yeah. That's super dope. So for all our viewers that are out there watching this video right now and they're trying to figure out like one key piece of advice that you could give to somebody that wants to become a producer, that wants to kind of take a step towards your direction, what is that one piece of advice that you would leave for somebody? Um, really? Just to have faith in yourself, always bet on yourself. Um, get out here in the world, even if you can't move, like invest money into traveling, 
meeting new people, shaking hands, and that's what really got me ahead. It's it's the music, of course, mm -hmm. but it's getting out here, traveling, shaking hands, and yeah. I was catching greyhounds, and I was catching trains, yeah. whatever I had to do, and what people, for the people with kids, um, just make that sacrifice. Whatever money you get, put a, a small percentage up for travel, mm -hmm. so you don't gotta worry about it. it's already a budget for travel. Yeah. Get out here, if you stay in a small city, travel to Atlanta, come here to LA, yeah. go to New York, Chicago, all yeah. these big cities, and just rub shoulders at the end of the day. That's, yeah. that's you know, that's how you get ahead. Just, we all here to just network with each other and mm -hmm. help each other climb these levels. And, and just, just kind of let people know what you what you do, yeah, who you are, yeah. what you're looking for. Yeah, because some, like, if you're just in a house doing what you do, it's like, yeah. it only can get so far, but you you in the crib grinding, wherever you at, you grinding, grinding, yeah. grinding, putting all this time in, and then, using that time to make them sacrifices, getting out here and, you know, I'm from Milwaukee, you know. <laughs> I'm here in LA, it feels great. Living, living you know? the dream. Living the dream, yeah. man. It's, it's not gonna be hard. I don't want people out there to think it's gonna be easy. Yeah. Um, you really gotta just put that time in and even when you're going through the storm, like right after the storm, that's usually where the blessings come because yeah. I went through my storm being homeless sleeping wow. in cars, couch to couch floors. And then when I was about to give up, I, I made a decision not to. And that's when party, me and party started dropping records and that's that's how my breakthrough came. So, yeah, a lot of people yeah. say when you're going through the storm and you can't see nothing else, that's when you're forced to literally walk by faith yeah. and to continue that journey. Yeah, I was about to go home. So, I was about to go home. Wow. I stayed and from that day on, well, thank you for not going home because you brought a lot of joy to our lives with your music and I can't wait to hear all everything else that you have to come up for yeah. you. Um, let everybody know where they can find Business Boy. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, at Business Boy, B-I-Z-N-E-S-S-B-O-I. -S -S Follow me, shout me out. I chop it up with people, I ain't bougie. You hit me <laughs> up, I hit you back. I communicate with people. That rock with me, so. And I'm going to make sure to tag below um, the Spotify list because you guys really got to check out all his work. Like, I'm a sincere fan of his, um, and I'm not just saying it because he's next to me. <laughs> um, I really am, so I'm going to tag that for you guys so you guys can check that out and add that to your playlist and support all your hardworking people that are, like, just trying to make a better living and help everybody else out. Business Boy, thank you so much for being here no today. I appreciate your time. And Hip Hop Weekly, until next time, make sure to check your girl out, Ari Rose.